And then we find in the time of Muhammad وسلم, in the battle of Uhud, the Muslims were told to stay on the mountain of the archers. And he said to them, do not come down off the hill. But they forgot. The worldly material took over. And they came off the hill to get their spoils of war. They were still new to Islam. They made a mistake. And a great massacre happened to the believers in Uhud. Among them is Muhammad, was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We all know Hamza radiallahu anhu was killed and cut to pieces. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about this in many passages in the Qur'an when the Muslims themselves started to ask the same questions we ask right now. What happened? The victory of Allah. We're on the truth. The messenger of Allah is with us. The disbelievers are all corrupt and wrong and evil. And we had been less of an amount in battles before that. Yet, the battles before that, we weren't losers, we were victorious, and now we were double the amount, we have more artillery yet, we lost terribly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies by saying, قُلْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِكُمْ Say, it was from yourselves. Meaning there are laws of nature that I have created, and that laws of, not just nature, but laws of victory. Where you are equal to the enemy, then whoever's stronger will win. But if your taqwa and your piety is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, eventually the victory will come. And Allah gives us examples of people before, He says, and when they look at those who were before them, Allah says specifically in the Qur'an, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ Did you assume that you will enter paradise? And when the people, the stories of the people before you come to you, they went through hardships and afflictions, until they got to the point to say, when is the victory of Allah? Even the messengers among them were asking, and Allah says, behold, the victory is, is near. It doesn't mean that we have to go through afflictions to win victory, and doesn't mean we are belittling the hardships of anybody. But I'm getting to a point here of how a Muslim learns about this life and why we're here and where we're going, and what's, what we're going to go through, and how we're supposed to be patient and go through trials and tests, and what we can learn we find in the time of the Mongols, if you know the story of the Mongols, the Tatar, in the 12th century, when the great Qutuz, the commander, and Baybars al-Bunduktari, if you know these names, they were called Mamluks. They were initially slaves. And then they, over time, these slaves became scholars and they became pious people. And it was just on paper, slaves, and they had masters. And the believing nation, the Muslims throughout the world, even the Khilafah, they were in the Khilafah. The strongest part was in Baghdad, in Iraq. We all know about the great library. And it was called the Golden Ages among the Westerners of the Muslims. Yet the Mongols came from nowhere. People who were completely away from civilization and almost wiped out the entire Muslim Ummah, all of them, until only Egypt was left. And this great commander, Qutuz and Baybars, they had rivalry between each other. They made, they made a pact and they came together and fought together by the will of Allah with great and immense righteousness. And they defeated the enemy in Gaza first. There was a small group. They defeated them in Gaza. And then they defeated them in Ain Jalut. Ain Jalut is where Dawood defeated Goliath. It is in a place today on the borders of occupied Palestine in the kaputs somewhere around there. That was Ain Jalut was around that area. And the Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them that there were billions, tens of millions of Muslims that were massacred.